Hi guys, um, so this hopefully should be the uh, CD-ROM 2 attachment for the PC engine. Um, this is a broken one and the fault on it is um, the, disc, the discs do not spin. So, um, you know, doing some research on uh, the web, uh, finding, you know, the common faults with this, uh, with this unit. Um, hopefully I, um, I know what's wrong with it. <laughs> but anyway, let's, uh, let's get it open and see, see what we got first. So uh, let's get this open here. Yeah. yeah, okay, here we go. It's got the briefcase unit too, hopefully. Yep, yeah, this looks good. Um, all right, well, let's, uh, let's just delve straight in because there's not much to this one. Let's get rid of the box. I've never seen I've never seen one of these in uh, in real life before, so this is quite quite interesting. Um, let's have a look at this bubble wrap off. PC Engine CD-ROM 2 system, lovely jubbly. Okay. Um, oh, that wasn't in the description. Seems like one of the buttons is missing there. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. I don't know if you can see that. One of the buttons is missing, unfortunately. That wasn't in the description, so I'm a little bit miffed about that. And there it is. There's the CD-ROM 2 unit. Bit yellowed, but I kind of intend to do, maybe, if I can get this machine running, I think I'm going to intend to do uh, a custom paint job on it, maybe. Um, just for fun, I mean, why not? <laughs> uh, okay, so here we have the super the system card, which I, I gather is used to. Um, I guess it works like the BIOS for the CD-ROM engine for CD um, for the CD-ROM itself. So, um, so yeah, as I, as I said before, the problem is that the CDs do not spin. So it looks quite clean inside. Yeah, the laser seems to be stuck right at the top, which is which is what I've been what, what I've been looking at on the internet is that if you turn this unit on and um, there's a whirring noise, but the CD doesn't spin, what it means is the middle gear. There's like three gears in the uh, in the lens lens array and uh, the middle one is made out of uh, really really crappy plastic um, so I came prepared and what happens is those 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 those, those plastic uh, gears end up you know just disintegrating basically so you're left with an empty an empty gear in the middle and two gears spinning like crazy so um, whether I can get these in I've managed to buy two two replacement gears off of eBay they're teeny they're really small so I've got I've got a couple there just in case I need them but uh, those are the gears so I guess uh, the only thing to do really first is maybe set it all up and uh, double check see what's wrong with it so I should do that next and I'll be back with you in a bit so let's try it with an audio CD now hopefully a bit of uh, a bit of dark throne will uh, will uh, bring this back to life with any luck. Uh, if Dark Throne can't do it, then I don't think anything will. Um, so let's uh, let's give it a go, let's see what happens. Sorry, it's a bit one-handed operations as usual. Let's get that in there. Press it down and play. Okay, so the units, the units come to life. But as you can no doubt hear, there's no um, no spinning noise. So let's have a look. Where's the? Uh, that must be where the the little thing comes down. Now uh, I'm not going to be able to do this with my. Sorry, I just pressed the button there. Now, as you can see disc is not spinning at all 
Um, so, and the other thing that's not happening is there's no noise whatsoever, which means the motors aren't going round. So I would that that to me sounds like there's two possible reasons for that. One could be that the laser is dead and you know is not focusing and can't read the discs, so therefore the motor isn't spinning up, or perhaps the gears are stuck. Um, which is another common fault, like the grease that, that um, is applied to the gears uh, can, you know, go hard, which means that the gear, you know, the, the laser can't move up and down on, on, its, uh, on its spindle. So um, I was having a little fiddle with the lens array, uh, just with the screwdriver, moving the lens backwards and forwards gently. And um, now... Uh, if I pretend to put a disc in and I press the play button, which I'm going to do with my camera hand, and I'll quickly try and focus, the laser moves. There you go. I don't know if you can see that. See the lasers moving? There, and then the spindle spun. So, is Dark Throne going to sort me out or not? Fingers crossed. It's spinning. Oh, yeah, you can hear that gear is really chugging away there. Yeah, you can hear that every time you every time you skip the track, you can hear that you can hear the motor really like grinding. Just gets the good bit. We turn in time. That's enough of that because I know some of you won't like it so there you go um, a supposedly junk PC engine CD-ROM 2 is half operational at the moment I mean obviously I haven't hooked it up to the uh, to the um, the interface there yet but um, yeah, it's uh, there's some life in it. So I, I've got a feeling with a bit of a uh, bit of TLC inside here, do a bit of cleaning up on the old um, on the old gears and stuff. This unit hopefully will work. I I, I may do. I'm going to do that first before I plug it all into the interface. Or I don't know. Maybe maybe I should maybe I should plug. I tell you what. I'm going to plug it into the interface first and just to see if a game will run. Um, if a game runs, then I know I'm not going to be wasting my time, I guess. So I'm going to try that first. Okay, guys. Um, basically, after setting up the uh, CD-ROM2 and the uh, PC Engine inside the briefcase, I think by the time I'd um, managed to sort that all out and get it all ready to, to turn it on, the gears were, were jammed again. So I've, basically, I'm just going to go for it. I'm gonna st I, I, I heavily suspect that it is the... Uh, the gears that are jammed or jamming and it's just a case that hopefully the uh, the grease is just hard and I think because obviously having the power supply connected for a good hour or something it warmed the, it warmed the console up and probably just loosened the grease enough for the uh, gears to start you know moving so um well let's get this uh, let's get this taken to pieces Now, we need to find out where the ribbon cables are. So it looks like one there. And one there, perhaps. So let's maybe get this one out first. Uh, if we can. All right. Gently 
does it. There we go, there's one. And turn it slightly like that. And there's one here, which is quite tight actually. There's not much movement there, so I've got to be careful. Oh, shit. Out. Right, there we go. What's the other ribbon cable down now? Right, okay. Looks so like the board wants to move this way. So obviously this is the first time I've taken this apart, so I haven't got a clue what we're in store for. Oh well, it doesn't look like it's been messed about with, to be honest. It looks... I'm not sure how to do this. I don't want to damage it. Maybe if I do that. There's a capacitor and a battery there. That's really tight. I'm a bit worried about that, so that's really tight. Can I get that to, to sit there without causing any trouble? Mm, I'm not too keen on this. Everything's really tight there at the moment. Maybe that'll do it, that looks good, that looks good. Yeah, that's what we need. So, so what I've seen on the internet is, um, this area here, this spindle here, you see a tiny little bit of grease there. Which, yeah, I'm just sort of touching it now and it's flaking. Um, and there's an area here that kind of juts out, and you can put some grease down the back there. Now, we can see straight away, let me move this because I don't want to drop that on the floor. Uh, this gear here, yeah, that sort of yellowed gear in the middle there, that is the uh, culprit, the gear that usually Swiss cheeses and just breaks into pieces. So I, I'm gonna replace that, I think, because we might as well, we've got it open, so let's replace it anyway. Uh, the problem with this is, there is a teeny, teeny little rubber grommet or ru like a rubber washer. A little rubber washer that holds this thing on and it's so bloody small. Um, and if you lose it, you're in big trouble. And you've got to, you've got to prise it off here. There's like a little, a little join in it somewhere. I'm just trying to spin it round here to find the join. I'm having trouble locating the join. And it's off. I fucking dropped it down the bottom. I'm gonna to have to retrieve that quickly before I lose it, because if you lose that, it's game over. Actually, guys, I can see it. I wish I had a smaller pair of bloody pliers for this. There it is. Oh my God, it's so small. It's ridiculously small. There you go, you can see that's the little the little thing there that holds that um, cog on. Now I've got, to, I've got to put this somewhere where I'm not going to lose it because if I lose this I'm in trouble. So I'm going to use, again, my little CD, my little uh, screwdriver case. Let's just make sure that's dropped in there. Yeah, there we go, right. Okay. Um, so now hopefully this should just... Should just come off there we go there it is that's off <sighs> whether you can see that and hopefully it will zoom in for you or rather focus um, it is tiny it is really tiny and the teeth to me looks like one of the teeth are actually gone on it yeah one of the teeth are gone so yeah good good decision to change that because that probably would have broken after bloody <laughs> trying to play something for a couple of minutes so I've got spare ones here but I'm not gonna not gonna put it in yet I'm gonna leave the, the motor separate so I can move this spindle and clean the spindle properly what we got here guys in this little cap 
which is probably not a good idea actually. Um, have I got something else to put it in? Oh, it might be all right just for the quick cleaning process. What we're going to be doing is this is 99% uh, isopropanol to clean this gear. So we're going to use a little cotton bud and basically being very careful and delicate with it. We're going to give this gear bit of a clean up with this with this stuff basically There's still gunk in the deep, the deep pockets of the uh, of the gear here. So what I think I'm going to do, um, I'll just go with this screwdriver down the grooves slowly, and just see if I can remove as much of the embedded grease as possible. There we go, auto focusing. There you can see most of the grease is out. Actually, there may just still be a little bit more of grim stuff up this end, which is kind of irritating, I don't know, it, it's really embedded in there. I don't know, it looks pretty clean now. I, I can't really see, I can't really see too much. There's maybe a teeny little bit more there I need to clean up on this edge here. Um, but up and down the spindle, it's, it's pretty bare. So I think, I think we've done a good job there. There we can see a close-up of the uh, of the middle gear, basically, and that has lost some teeth. My God, it's so small! I can barely see it. There it is. You can see it's lost a tooth there. Only one, but I mean that's enough. Right, guys. So. Now what we need to do, we need to re-grease this and we're going to be using lithium, white, white, white lithium grease basically. Um, I don't know what brand this is, I just I got it off Amazon, quite cheap. It should do the job. So we just need to grease up the spindle. So that looks nice and greased to me now. Ooh, uh, just run it up and down a spindle a couple of times. Right guys, uh, next job is to replace the middle gear with one of our brand new replacement parts. Uh, there we go. So we should we should be able to do this with our fingers really. Let's just uh, let's just turn this around slightly. I'm just gonna use the magnifying glass here guys so I can see what the bloody hell I'm doing. It's so bloody small. Ah oh, damn, I may need some needle nose pliers for this. Oh no, no, there we go, there we go. There we go. Uh, let's use the edge. Edge of a screwdriver just to push it on. There we go. There we go, it's spinning. I'll tell you what, just feeling this, I can automatically tell that it feels a lot 
lot looser and a lot freer than it was when I was first trying to move this on the old cog and uh, it's sliding off now. So yeah, that's why you need the rubber grommet basically, the little rubber, um, the little rubber uh, ring. Now I'm dreading trying to get that rubber ring back on there basically because it's a really small little thing and I haven't really got anything teeny to use to try and reapp reapp uh, reapply it. But anyway, there it is. That's almost finished. I've just got to get that bloody grommet, uh, the, the, what the, the little rubber washer back on. Uh, once we get that rubber washer back on, put it back nice and neatly, get all the ribbon cables back into where they go, which is probably going to be a pain in the ass, I'd imagine. So, rubber grommet time. Let's. Uh, <laughs> I am really not looking forward to this. This thing is so small. It's ridiculous. I mean, just picking the bloody thing up is hard enough. Okay. Honestly, I don't have a clue how I'm going to do this. This is going to be tough. Yeah, if you see at 12 o'clock, there's like a tiny little split in that plastic plastic washer, and that's how you're going to how you're going to slip it onto the spindle, basically. So I'm not going to I'm not going <laughs> to I'm not going to let you watch me scream and curse and swear. At <laughs> trying to get this fucking thing on and probably losing it in the middle of it all and then having to dig it out and stuff so um, I'll come back when I've either lost it or I've got it on <laughs> so I should see in a bit <sighs> okay guys that was absolutely ridiculously difficult to get that on I really need to get some better tools um, so in the end what I managed to do is I managed to get the little little rubber plastic washer back or the little plastic washer back on using a pair of tweezers. Like, you know, put nose hair pulling tweezers and uh, my scalpel blade basically. It was a, it was a really it was a really precarious little operation. Um, and you can see when it finally focuses, you can see it's back there, it's on. Um, and you know it's it's spinning and it's not coming off it's not falling off and then you can see just above the lens is moving down the spindle and it's cleaning all the grease and and, and it's really nice and loose now it feels it feels really good to pull um, when it spins around so it's uh, it's all good so now we just got to put this piece back together and then it won't work. <laughs> now hopefully it, it will work. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I haven't done anything to mess this up. This thing's been this, th this thing's been on. You know, I've I've already seen that the uh, you know with connected to the PC engine, the BIOS. You know, it's all up there. It says wait waiting for CD or please wait a moment. So I know this this system's working. It's just whether or not this this little fix here. Uh, this little uh, clean up operation and the replacement of this middle gear has done the job basically um, so let's hope so right so let's uh, let's put this little bugger back together okay guys so we got those ribbon cables back in they were tedious as I was expecting it to so we got that one in there and we got the other one in on the other side up here, which that's the easier one to put in. You get get that one in first, I'd recommend, because this one on this side, you've got less room for maneuver, uh, so you've got more slack on the other one, basically. So get this one done second. Um, yeah, so that being said, it all feels nice and nice and sturdy. We should all be good. We should all be good to go. So let's. Uh, Let's do a little test. Let's put it back together first, and then uh, let's we'll do a little test with the uh, with the speakers. And uh, I pray it bloody works. But uh, making sure these are all lined up right. Okay, let's get this center center screw back in.
Okay guys, I've made it back. And if you have a good taste in metal, then you should like this CD. First Iron Maiden album, Repress. Hopefully. It's spinning. Great success. Okay guys, welcome back. Um, so the system's all set up, power is uh, ready and we're ready to try it out. So I have my trusty Street Fighter or Fighting Street disc that I actually did buy before I bought this console because I wanted to rip the music off the disc. Um, I really like the music from this game, especially the CD, the PC CD version of it, PC Engine CD version of it. So uh, unfortunately, the audio isn't audio tracks on this game, it's actually embedded into the um, into the game code. So that was a bit of a bit of a bummer. But uh, anyway, let's uh, let's do the business. Let's see if this works. Power on. And there we have CD-ROM system ready there push run button so here we go disc spinning and there it is fighting street or street fire <laughs> let's hear a bit of the sound just to uh, make sure it is playing it properly and there we go so there we go, broken uh, CD-ROM 2 unit, now working. And it didn't really take that much effort to fix. Just a little bit of reading up on the internet and maybe getting a bit lucky. But there it is. So thanks for watching guys. Um, if you can comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, uh, that would be most appreciated. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care.